Now, of course, a lot of us were thinking that this was going to be the week on Monday Night Football where Ravens rookie first round draft pick wide receiver Rashad Bateman was going to make his 2021 season debut. Even his trainer was like, oh, it's game time. He even put we ready in the background and all. And then in the very next clip that he put, it was of Rashad Bateman. He said it's go time. But. Let's read what Jeremy Fowler, who is the bearer of bad news, has to say. He said, Ravens rookie wide receiver Rashad Bateman will not make his debut this week. Instead, gearing up for week six against the Chargers per source. Ravens discussed a pitch count for the first round pick, but coming off the groin injury, they wanted to give it a little more time. And with that, I have zero problem with that. Yeah, I was excited to see Rashad Bateman this week. I know everybody was. We all were. But I have absolutely zero problem with them resting him, with them waiting yet another week just to make sure there are no setbacks, just to make sure everything's good to go. Because think about this. If you got to have somebody on a pitch count, if you got to have somebody on a pitch count with their snaps, then usually that means that they ain't ready yet. Now, when he does come back, I know he ain't going to be full go. And when I say full go, it ain't going to be like he's going to be a, a starter out there or whatnot. He's going to be out there 24-7 with the offense. No, I don't expect it. I expect him to, again, be gradually brought along as the season goes on. But with, with Rashad Bateman, we got to remember this is not just a random free agent pickup that the Ravens got. This is not a, a quick band-aid wide receiver that the Ravens are using to help out. No, this is somebody that's a big part of their future. So if, there, if it's something that's a big part of your future, you don't rush it back. Even though you want it to be out there so bad and you're just like, oh, it's Rashad Bateman week, let's go. But you don't want to rush it back. Now, one thing that I hope Ravens fans hear this, and I hope they, I hope they hear it clearly too. I, I really hope that, because with every week that passes, with every practice that passes, with every day that passes, with every game that passes, and Rashad Bateman, he hasn't made his debut yet. When he does come back, Ravens fans, please temper your expectations. Please. I'm, I'm telling you this for your own good. Please do that. Because, reason being, because you, and, and I feel like the, the pressure is like mounting for Rashad Bateman every week that he doesn't play. And he really can't do anything about it. But I feel like every game that he doesn't play, every week that passes, Ravens fans, their, their, their excitement and, and anticipation for Rashad Bateman, it grows and 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 it keeps growing. Because it's like that, it's the buildup. It's the buildup and it's the wait. And it's just being anxious. Oh man, we finally gonna get to see him play this week? Oh no, not this week. Okay. Next week, oh, he's gonna be next week. Okay, not this week. Oh, okay. And you just, it keeps building up. And I can understand it because again, we all feeling the same thing, but we got to remember. And we got to be realistic about this thing too. We do expect him to be a contributor, but it's gonna take some time. Now, if he comes in and goes off from jump, hey, we ain't gonna have no problem with it. But I'm not going to expect that because if you expect him to come in, say, oh, oh I think he's going to come in and catch like five catches for like 122 yards and two touchdowns. We wouldn't complain if it happened, but I don't think we should expect it to happen yet. And, and what the thing that I don't want to happen with Rashad Bateman is what happened with Brashad Perryman. And I know they are two different receivers. I'm not saying that they're the same receiver. I'm not saying that they have similar play style. I'm not saying that. So don't take that from this. But what I'm saying I do not want to happen with Rashad Bateman towards what happened with Perryman and it was with the, the anticipation and the buildup and the weight and the weight and the weight. And then when it wasn't this immediate, just him going off immediately, people turned on him quick. They turned on him right away. And then some other stuff happened too, but we don't even need to get into that. So with Rashad Bateman, please be patient. His time will come. And his games where he's going off will happen. But just take it easy. Now, 
the news wasn't all bad because we got some other news from one Jamison Hensley. So Jeremy Fowler, look again, that's the same guy who said, hey, I've talked to all these NFL executives and they say that this is going to be the year that Lamar Jackson gets figured out. That was Jeremy Fowler, if you didn't remember. Again, the bearer of bad news. He said, when it comes to good news, nah, I'm raving, man. I ain't talking about them boys. I no good news. We ain't worried about that. But bad news, oh, give it to me, give it to me, because I want to ruin these Ravens fans' days. But Jameson, his, <laughs> Jameson Hensley, he said, while Bateman won't play, so while Rashad Bateman won't be making his debut tonight, which is fine, we understand. The expectation is that Ravens wide receiver Miles Boykin, Boyk, Boyk. <laughs> hey, man. Ooh, I can't wait. But anyway, he said the expectation is that Ravens wide receiver Miles Boykin will make his 2021 debut tonight. He has missed the first four games with a hamstring injury. So, while B Bateman is out, that's okay. Boykin is up. And the thing about Boykin, and I, and I told y'all this from Jump. I said, when, the, when, when, when soon as both of these guys were activated on the same day from injury reserve, I said that my expectation is that Boykin is always, he was going to play before Bateman does. He was going to play before him. Because, definitely because of the two different injuries. One was hamstring, one was groin. But Boykin has been here already. Boykin has done that already. He, he's played already. And I feel like the expectation, it's sad to say, but I feel like, People's expect, excuse me. People's expectation for Miles Boykin are lower than they are for Rashad Bateman, even though Miles Boykin has been here already. Now I know I, I seen every time we talk about Miles Boykin, I always see it in the comments section. So many people, oh, what do you see in Miles Boykin, man? What, 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 what are you so hype on Miles Boykin? Why do you like Miles Boykin so much? What's what's up with Miles Boykin? Why do you like him so much? Why are you such a big fan of Miles Boykin? I see that all the time. I got no problem with people asking the question because not everybody sees Miles Boyk in the same way, which is fine. That's understandable. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Trust me, I won't hold it against you if you don't see Miles Boykin the same way I see Miles Boykin. But when I see Miles Boykin, and I've said this before we added Kiki, I've said this before we added TT, I've said it way before this season even started. So before the passing game was where it is right now, we've been talking about this from long, long ago. But anyway, with Miles Boykin, my biggest thing with him was just the lack of opportunity. It was never a thing where he can't catch. It was never a thing where he don't know how to make plays. It was the lack of opportunity. Now, I know some people say, well, but when he does get his chance, a lot of times he'll run the wrong route. He'll do the wrong play. Him and Lamar Jackson will be so far apart that chemistry is just all kinds of bad. And it has been. But how do you get better at something without repetition? How can, how can you improve on something without repetition? Unless you mean to tell me that everybody's going to be perfect ex at something by, but on a, their first couple of times trying it. You're going to be perfect at it. Unless that's the case, hey, you got it. But with Miles Boykin, I just felt like he needed more volume to get better. Now... Is he going to just come in right away and get all that volume? No, I don't expect that. But the thing I do expect is to see significant improvement from Miles Boykin. Why? Because of TT and Kiki. And the reason I say that is because we've seen just the, the change, the, the drastic change, not just, a, but the drastic change with our wide receivers with our passing game, and the fact that even if the top two wide receivers, say, for instance, they get a little silent during the game. We saw it last week against the number one passing defense, against just a really good defense, period. We saw it last week. Hollywood got his now, and Sammy Watkins contributed too, but in moments where they got quiet, here comes Proche, and even Duvenay got in the mix a little bit too. But for, for, for them to do what they did and, and involve the other guys as well, that's very promising for one Miles Boykin. And we know one of the biggest things with him, and I believe it was Keith Williams that said it when he spoke on Miles Boykin before the season started, when he was having an introductory press conference. He said, whatever these guys were last year, 
That was last year. That's not this year. So just because that's what they were, that does not mean that's who they are. So and we know it, Miles Boykin, it was a mental thing. That's it. It was just a mental thing. That was the biggest thing with Miles Boykin, in my opinion. It was a mental thing. It's not that he can't be physical, because the thing is, I know a lot of people say, oh, man, he's 6'5", but he, he plays like he's like 5'10". Now, we, we do want to see him be more aggressive, but wh where do you get aggression from? How do you, be, how do you attack the ball more? Do, do you, is that from, is that from a lack of being physical? No. That, that's from a, th right here. It starts up here. If you're going to attack the ball more and actually go for it, that starts up here. Because if you ask anybody, I don't know, some people like, they like to get on this too. They're like, oh, that shouldn't be a wide receiver's number one trait. But if you ask somebody, who's the Ravens' best blocking wide receiver? They'll tell you, Miles Boykin from jump. They will tell you that every single time without fail. So it, how could somebody who's not physical be the Ravens' best blocking wide receiver? How is that even possible? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's not. So he has the physicality. He just got to use it at the right places. And obviously he uses it when he's blocking. But now it's time to take it to that next level, again, mentally, and use it when attacking the ball, going to get the ball, taking that ball, using all six, four, six, five of you, and taking that ball out of the air. Making sure that cornerback doesn't have a chance to get it. But again, that comes with repetition. That comes with opportunity. And it also comes from better coaching, which is clear that the Ravens have that this year. They have a vast improvement on coaching because that has been something that for years and years and years and years before Giro, before Marty Morningwick, before Mark Tressman, before all these offensive coordinators that we done been through. The wide receiver coaches just have not been there. But this year, what they added with Kiki and TT, that took this, their game to another level. Because that had, uh, that had been where the Ravens had struggled at for their, their, pretty much their entire existence. They just struggle there, wide receiver, every year. Struggle, struggle, struggle. And they will continue to get these band-aids. Every year, wide receiver, they get these band-aids. They sign these guys, these 32, 33, 34, 35-year-old guys, these band-aids. And it just, it will never work long term. The short term, a lot of times it worked out. Sometimes it didn't, though. But if you want to really take this team to the next level, especially if you're getting ready to pay your quarterback that next level money, you want to have some young, gifted, hungry, great wide receivers in place. But to make sure your young Hungry, gifted wide receivers are young, hungry, and gifted. You got to have the right people leading them. And you got to have the right people coaching them. So that's what the Ravens invested in this offseason. And it's made a big difference. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like Rashad Bateman is this week, I'm out.